Chess, Baku Grand Prix, being played from October 1st to October 15th, 2014. Great world-class players, one of the qualifying tournaments for the World Championship for next year. Here are the standings in the Baku Grand Prix 2014. After two rounds, Fabiano Caruana, Peter Svidler, Carl Nakamura, Boris Gelfand, all with one and a half points. Dominguez, Kosman Janov, Tomaszewski, Grishuk, and Rajabov with one point. Karyakin and Mamajerov with one half point, and Andre can yet to score with zero points. Well, my buddy stole in the hunt, Nakamura. Let's see how the rest of the tournament goes. It's going to be a long one. Hi, folks. John Cordisco back again. Round two of the FIDE Grand Prix in Baku, 2014. One of the qualifying tournaments to get in the candidates final to play for the World Championship next year. I'm happy to say this is my buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura, is black. And Dmitry Andrakin from the Soviet Union, I should say Russia instead, as white. Uh, it's going to be a great game. It's a Dutch defense. Go, Carl. Nakamura is black. Andrakin is white. Let's go through it. It's going to be a Dutch, as I said before. I wanted to say there's going to be a video at the end of this video with the press conference with the two players talking about the game. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Give you an idea what they were thinking. Tassels, pretty much standard Dutch stuff. C3. This is the move that was out of the norm for the Dutch. Standard moves are knight c3, c4, bishop f4. Andrekin tried c3. Now, it's about a half a point advantage for white right now, but I guess that was a new... I don't think it's a, a brand new new move, but it's a move that's very rarely played. D6, I think they mentioned they played this in a rapid game, I should say a blitz game of one minute. They play bullet a lot on ICC and play chess uh, on Draken and Nakamura. And they had mentioned that. Queen to B3. E6. It is the correct move, but I just don't like blocking in the dark squared bishop. That is the correct move. Bishop G5, pinning the knight. Queen E8. Standard stuff. Queen of D7 is also acceptable. I think it blocks in the bishop again, but Queen E8. Knight to D2. The B knight to D2. Knight comes up to H5. Knight to C6 is the computer move. It must be something that Carl was working on there. Don't know what the point of that is. Uh, maybe he can explain it and you'll see. I'm trying to under remember if he did it in the video or not. Knight D1. You know, well, going over these Grandmaster games like I do, my own personal games, the Grandmaster game is a little bit harder because you get an idea what they're what they're striving for, but when they make a move like that, Knight to H5, you wish they were here or could tell you what was their thinking process at the time. And that's how us guys learn. We're just average players, at least most of us are. H6, kick the bishop. Bishop goes back to E3. Knight to C6, A5, and F4. G5 is coming up now a little bit. All legitimate moves. Akaro decides to go G5. And right away, Andrekin opens it up with F4. Should he push? Should he lock it up? Akaro takes. Bishop takes. I probably would have played knight takes bishop as well. Carl tried king to h8. He wants to get out of this queen nonsense on his king. Bishop back to e3. I think d3 was worth considering as well. Knight c6. Finally, the knight gets developed. Knight to d3. 
B6. Well, we see where the light square bishop is going to go. It's going to either go here on B7 or here. Now, this is a move that the question mark, a double question mark for Andraken. And they talked about this move a little bit, and I think it's worth exploring. Right now, it's about a point advantage for White. He went G4, and immediately his advantage completely evaporated, and it's almost almost a half a point advantage for Black now. That's, that's a point and three quarters in one move. That's a lot. Now, what do you do here? Do you take? The computer likes F takes G4. And knight to f6 second. And that's what Carl did. He moved the knight back. If he had taken, after queen to c2, d5. And I think black's okay here. More than okay. Knight to f6. G takes. E takes. And see those two isolated pawns there? I don't know if I'd have nerve to do that. Even though I do have to say one of my games in the New York State Championship a few videos ago, I did have a bishop on g7 and a pawn on h6 so if i'm playing in part like nakamura i'm very encouraged <laughs> bishop f2 bishop now that shows the line of the bishop the computer did the yellow lines i did the red square it's what black is trying to do is trying to get his bishop onto e4 queen c2 bishop d5 here we go Knight f3, those of you that are wondering if bishop had taken after knight takes, rook over, bishop f6. It is basically an even game. After knight to f3, bishop d4, now that's a great square for that bishop. Now if it gets taken, say a bishop takes in the future, pawn takes, and this pawn comes up, and that's a real strong center. And on top of that, it opens up this f-file onto white's king. Very nice. Queen to d2. Knight d7. Now, slowly but surely, I think, and it's not anything like one or two move big deals. I think slowly but surely, Nakamura is slowly outplaying on Draken and building up an advantage here. Bishop h4. King to h7 is a suggestion by the computer. Knight e to d5. All those are pretty good moves. Nakamura decides to go knight to g6 to challenge that bishop. I like that move actually a little better than the computer choices. Bishop takes. Now what do you take with? You take with the rook or the bishop? Well, obviously, you take with the rook. So what happens is if you take with a bishop, those who are not watching, queen takes check. And that really sucks for black. Rook takes. Rook to f2. c5. Rook comes over. Now white's doubled up here. Looks like he's got something going on black. But to be honest with you right now, it's about a three-quarter point advantage or pawn advantage for black. It doesn't look like much right now to us amateur players, but there's a hell of an attack coming here. And, of course, these guys see it. It doesn't look like white's king's exposed, but it is. Queen e6, slowly turning the screws, a3. That wasn't so hot of a move. h4 was a suggestion on the computer. Try to get that knight out of there. He went a3. After h4, those of you that are wondering, after c4, h5, pawn takes, pawn takes. He gets his piece back, of course, because you see he's attacking the bishop and the knight both. So he gets his piece back. But after a3, rook to g8. Here we go. It's a point and a half advantage right now for black. King to h1. I'm not going to decide to come up a square. Maybe he's eyeballing to protect the h6, maybe, or the g6 square. I'm not sure. And this is where Andraken goes wrong again. h4 again is a suggestion on the computer. 
or rook to g1. It's hard doubling up rooks and then taking them off. I like h4 myself. He went queen to, g, queen to e3. And the points are creeping up now for black. And I can see the computer here running off screen. I got a Fritz 13 running. And we're coming up on almost a two-point advantage. If h4, a bishop takes, bishop takes h5. And I'll tell you what, I think that white's out of the doghouse. But after queen to e3, rook to e8, now he concentrates on the other file. I mean, these double rooks right here and here are basically worthless. Queen to d2, rook to g8, queen to e3, c4. This is a two-fold repetition. I think they're trying to catch up on some time here. Now, coming up, they start getting some terrific time trouble. And I'll point out the spot, I think, uh, when I was watching the video, that they were both down pretty low. Now, this is where I think Andraken stumbles again. Knight dd1 is a suggestion on the computer, and I actually go along with that. Reason being that you get some more protection over for the king here. That knight guards a lot of key spots. Knight here. Double protects this knight, this space, a lot of things. But he goes knight to f4 instead. I think what he's looking at is getting rid of an attacking piece. But now knight takes, queen takes, rook g6. Now he's, Nakamura switches gears on him. Now he's back on this file again. So those two rooks for white are worthless. h3, wait, I mean, what else can he do? Rook to g1, h3, queen d2. I mean, he's, he's backed up. He's, got, he's all backed up. This look, look at this entire position is right here, basically. Absolutely no room. H3. What else can he do? Bishop F6. Now the points are really climbing up. Really climbing up. And they're both in terrific time trouble, especially on Draken. King to H2. Three and a half point advantage now almost for black. Bishop E7. Very subtle move. Very subtle move. The computer likes rook on 8 to g7, and then after rook g1, queen g8, now you got a Al Yekin's gun. Bang! And then a4, and black's basically doomed. But after bishop e7, bishop h1, I mean, where's he going to go? There's no place he can go. Queen can't move worth the square, worth anything. Well, the rook comes up, rook to g2, and bishop g5. And this is here, roughly, we're on move 36 now, where Nakamura had about two minutes left, according to the video online. And Andrake had, had about a minute. And he got four moves to go. It's an incredible time pressure. Now, they're both bullet players. They played each other bullet is minute chess online millions of times. But Nakamura is a world-class bullet player. And he's got a hell of an advantage. It's, it's a lot easier when you have the advantage. Queen has to move. According to the computer, knight takes was the last hope. That after pawn takes, queen to f2. And it still sucks. I mean, it's still horrible. Queen to g3. Bishop c1. Now, who would have saw that coming? Oddly enough, that's not the computer's first move. Bishop e3 is. Then bishop c1. It's slowly creeping up. There's so many good moves for that bishop. d2, c1, e3. Not going to decide to go c1. Now he's starting to go after material. All the pieces for white are covering the king. Rook has to take. Rook takes the queen. I mean, what's he going to do here? If you, if you move the queen anywhere... So it's picking off these pawns, and the game is over. He has to take it. Rook takes. Rook takes. Bishop takes. I think maybe Rook takes was a little better way to go. And after King takes F4 check, King H2, Black is doomed. Black is doomed no matter what. It's just more doomed. Rook, ta Rook takes check. King takes. Bishop takes. Queen E3. Now, we got a queen and a bishop for a queen. 
And you think that's more than enough, but it really isn't. Rook to g1, check. Moves, bishop, trying to get some counterplay. Queen to d2. Rook checks. King, uh oh, not going to lose the h pawn. Well, not really. King to d8, check. Check. B8, check. B7. And this is where Dimitri Andraken placed second place in the last Grand Prix tournament in Tromsø, Norway. Resigns, give you an idea of what would happen after Bishop checks. King, check. King d8, check. King e7, rook. King f8. There's nothing more they can do. What is White going to do? These pawns are doomed. They're all in dark squares. Bishop can't help. So Andraken said, the heck with it and resign. Well done by Carl. Congratulations. He's got a point and a half now out of two. You'll see a short video of both of them at the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, folks, I want you to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Carl, Carl. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Gentlemen, welcome to a press conference. We have at the moment Hikaru Nakamura, and uh, let's check what happened in this game. He won it. Yeah, all right. I mean, I decided to play a Dutch, uh, more or less to try and surprise Dimitri. Um, I just, you know, I haven't played it in quite a few years, so I thought no reason not to try it now. Um, okay, I mean, I, I didn't really know what line he would play because I saw he had only played one game, I think, and it was against me, and it was in Blitz, so um, I really didn't know. But he played the C3 line. Um, Okay, all this, uh, up, up until here I knew it. I mean, I didn't know this bishop g5 move previously. Um, I had a game, knight g5, d5, uh, I think it was bishop f4 first with, uh, with Hare Krishna, um, also in blitz. Um, but, okay, this is probably also a normal move, so I guess all these moves were um, pretty normal. And I think this really was the first critical point in that um, Dimitri could play f4 or he could play bishop takes b7. But I, I think, um, you know, I, I wasn't really sure what was going on here. I was playing more on a feel and intuition than, um, than, than actual, actual like, uh, calculation. I just figured, I mean, it's going to be complicated um, and it'll be an interesting game. I mean, for example, let's say knight b3. Um, okay, there's this move a5 uh, for starters, and I, I think it's very unclear. Um, but... But even so, I mean, there, there are also ideas with maybe just um, rook b8. White has to go queen a6. Um, if you take on c7, you lose you lose, um, you lose, lose the queen because queen takes d6, bishop f8, and the queen is trapped on d6. So queen a6. And now, um, yeah, and so, and so now, I mean, I think it's I mean, very unclear. Something like uh, e5 or maybe just f4 first. Um, bishop c1 and b5. I mean, it's, it's unclear. White is a pawn, but um, I think it's much easier to play for black than it is for white. Um, We're checking the variation should be 7 uh, at the moment. It looked dangerous, uh, good compensation. Yeah, so I mean, okay, all this is, I mean, correct, I think. I mean, so, somewhere around here, yeah, right around here is probably the, the, the really critical moment. Um, okay, g4, I mean, it's I don't, I don't really know what to say, because the structure is really strange here. It's not a normal sort of pawn structure, and that makes it very hard to play, I think, for both sides. Um, but okay, g4, knight f6, takes, takes, and okay, I, th I think here this is probably the last one. I think after knight f3, bishop e4, I mean, white's probably a little bit worse, I think, for the rest of the game, whereas, um, you know, I, f I felt after something like knight f4, which takes g2, king takes g2, um, not sure, maybe 97, 96. I mean, it's it's not not so clear to me um, if if black has has an advantage here after king h1. I mean, it, it looks much better, but I, I wasn't 100 percent sure um, because I mean, I think after this, I mean, white probably can defend somehow, but it's going to be very very unpleasant in general. Um, I mean, because the problem is all the pieces are coming to the king side, and really. Okay, from this moment on, I mean, I, I was quite confident that I'm, I'm simply playing playing for the win here, and I mean, it's not, I'm not really sure what White can do other, I mean, other than what Dimitri did, which is kind of just sit and wait. I mean, and of course, at some point, it's not, um, not really clear.
clear. I mean, okay, after the game, I mean, I spoke a little bit with the Mill Tosky, and he he seemed to think that it wasn't so clear. I mean, around this position, if if uh, if White kind of just 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 waits here, um, I think maybe even just Bishop G two. I mean, he he wasn't so sure. Um, it's Queen J eight and Bishop H one and T five. I don't have ah, like this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then rook G. Yeah, then 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 it's all, all just winning. So I mean, probably somewhere. I mean, somewhere. I. I mean, I just think it's. I mean, it's just worse. I mean, pretty much from after knight after three on, it's just. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what what you can do. I mean, okay, you can play like in the game, but I mean, I, I think it's just just losing. I think this end game's losing. I mean. Of course, uh, it was a little bit tricky because I was getting low on time, and at first I thought, I mean, somehow this should be winning, but um, after Queen H4 uh, takes. Oh wait, no, Queen, Queen H. Ah, Queen H4. I go D5. Sorry, D5 takes, takes. But I think here, if White just starts waiting, I, I didn't, I didn't see a win here. I mean, maybe I'm completely crazy, but I mean, I, I, I mean, White just keeps sitting with Rook on D1, and I didn't see a win. I mean, maybe there, maybe there's some win. Queen H5. Queen H5? Ah. Queen F6? No, no. Ah, uh, Queen H. Ah, okay. This is how I win this. Ah, okay. No, like I, I saw this idea and I thought someone was winning, but I only had like one minute left. And I mean, I, when, when I saw that I had Bishop C1, which for sure was going to win material. I mean, I didn't want to, but. Okay, I mean, I think it's, it's just losing. I mean, this is the best practical try, but um, the only thing was I was a little surprised that Dimitri didn't play on here with uh, Bishop F3, King A6, and maybe. Maybe. Tr um, I'm trying some rook c8. I mean, it's probably also losing, but I, 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 I mean, I thought it was worth a try at least. Maybe queen a3, and some king g3, king f4. I mean, I assume it's, I assume it's losing somehow, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't see a win right away, so I, th I thought maybe it'd play on. But I mean, objectively, it should be lost anyway. So I mean, it's just, yeah, just, that's how it goes. Uh, Dmitry, can you say something about this game and uh, what was the moment you lost your track in this, in this game? The first critical moment. Yeah. I could have played d4 here. No, если черные сразу ходят f4, даже h4 было лучше. If black play, black play f4 immediately, then g4 white is better. Я не мог понять вот. But I couldn't understand. Допустим, так. If, for example, this moves. And queen takes e6. I was thinking about something here, but I don't remember right now. Maybe I could have played Bishop H4. It was also interesting. White could have got some play here. But I couldn't find. I couldn't find anything for so. And in any case, I has to sacrifice some material somewhere. Here I could have taken on a four with with a pawn. Then to change all rooks on G file. I think I made the many, many mistakes today in this game. Uh, here I was uh, considering this position as not worse for me at least. But uh, in, in just in after a few moves, uh, my, uh, actually I had to go, have to turn to defend to defend the position, and actually the position collapsed. I didn't like here uh, g Okay, it's extra pawn. I could have played like this. It was possible. It shouldn't be bad for for white. We, we can see many things here, but there were, for example, there was this variation with rook h4 after. 
but it's uh, difficult to say after the game. No, but okay, actually here I, I was just going to play Bishop B7 like this. Because I think all the tactics don't oh, work. Okay. But okay, I mean it's it's I mean very. I think just in general it's very hard to play this position for both colors, and I mean I. I mean, uh, once I got in bishop d5, I, I think uh, I just understood the, the danger perhaps for it a little bit better. Uh, actually, uh, as uh, one of the commentators mentioned today, uh, you played uh, two classical games and maybe thousands of bullet games. Uh, did it somehow influence your preparation? Uh, I classical mean, opening preparation, do you count uh, bullet games? Okay, I mean, ob obviously, I mean, that's in the past I played many games, but no, I mean, that's, that's, that's for fun, that's not, that's not, I mean, I'm not playing serious openings in bullet games or blitz games.